Hello and welcome to the Blender Basics video series. These videos are designed to accompany the chapters found in the Blender Basics tutorial book and not as a replacement. So if you don't have the book, head on over to www.cdschools.org slash Blender Basics to download a free copy. This video will focus on chapter 4, the Blender Render Engine, so let's get started. First off, I have the actual written chapter up on the screen right now. Um, for reference as we go through things and I really recommend that you read through this chapter to help you out with with things uh, Blender has always had their own built-in render engine. It was you know basically called the classic render engine or blender renderer um, A few years ago they started to integrate a new cycles render engine into blender and they're both in the system now and working side by side and cycles is improve is receiving improvements constantly so it changes a lot uh, so which one is better? Depends on what you're looking at. Um, do you need that perfect project or do you need it tomorrow? That's the way that I look at the internal render engine or cycles. Do you have a computer with a really, really nice fancy video card in it that can handle a lot of 3D graphics? Or are you stuck like most of us are in a high school setting where um, you have nice computers but you know what? You're not going to have really great video graphics. Um, you're going to have to live with what you've got and when you have you know 20 to 80 students running through a system and you've got to get their projects done and you have limited render time and you know even in our room we have a small render farm but it's not going to handle a high volume of students with things and I know a lot of other educators are in the same boat as I am so I still put a big focus on the internal render engine and uh, even though a lot of these activities in this book are written for the classic render engine I have tried to integrate a lot of cycles into the booklet now this year um, and I know I might still take some negative comments for the fact that we haven't ditched the internal render engine, but you know what? It's what we have to work with, so a lot of these videos will focus on the internal render engine. So what is a render engine? You know, that's one thing you might want to ask yourself. It is the thing that takes your 3D models and your lights and your cameras and your materials and textures and figures out how to turn it into a picture. The classic render engine has received a lot of heat over the years because it has a hard time handled bounced or reflected lighting and uh, ray trace features which are um, mirrors and reflections. Those things have been a little difficult to do in the classic render engine and while it can give you very nice results if you are looking for 100% realism it's not going to give it to you. Uh, so you're looking for a cartoon or are you looking for something that's supposed to look very realistic? And that's where Cycles comes in, where Cycles has a lot more options for that. Um, it is a little more difficult to grasp because everything is node-based, meaning you have to tie together a bunch of little blocks in order to put your, your rendering together. Um, and when you render, it can be very time-consuming. Um, but all of that is getting better over time as you go through. So let's go back right into Blender and let's take a look at all of this. For this uh, example we're going to do in this chapter, I'm going to replace the initial cube with another scene. So I'm going to delete the initial cube and I'm either going to hit, um, let me turn on my basic key commands here. So you can see which keys I'm hitting. Okay, so I'm going to hit spacebar, which is my dynamic spacebar. I'm going to add mesh and I'm going to add um, a monkey head to this case. So the Blender monkey head has been around for a very long time. I'm going to rotate the monkey head to kind of make it look like it's sitting on the floor from a right side view. And let's see, let's rotate it towards the camera so I can see what the camera currently is looking at. I'm going to take my outliner view menu here and turn it into a 3D view, zero for camera view. So there's what we have to look at. Okay, let's add a plane for it to sit on. So add object mesh plane scale that up a little, a little bit so now the monkey head is sitting on a plane now to make the monkey head look better I'm just reselect the monkey head again with the right mouse button and I'm going to hit smooth over here on shading and if you've watched any of the previous videos um, this is nothing new so hopefully if you're uh, I'm moving along a little quickly with some of these commands you might want to look back through some of the previous chapters Okay, and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier to the monkey head because he just doesn't look very smooth. So we did a, something with a modifier with booleans in the last chapter. Well, now I'm going to go to the modifiers again. I'm going to apply a subdivision surface to the monkey head. And all of a sudden, the monkey head's going to look a lot better because what we've done is we've subdivided the mesh a little bit and it smoothed it out much more. So we have this so far. Now I have some lighting to deal with up here. There's my one initial light. 
So I'm going to switch to, right now I'm in a user perspective view, so I'm going to hit number pad 5 to go into an ortho view and number pad 7 to go into a top view. I'm going to hit G to grab that light and pull it over here a little bit between the camera and the monkey head. So when I hit F12 to render a picture, there's what you have so far. So what are we rendering in? Well, by default, here's how you select your render engine. Um, right now we're in Blender Render, which is the classic internal render engine. And then here's the Cycles Renderer. I'm going to stay in Blender Render for right now. And I'm going to select the monkey head, and we're just going to put on a basic material. We'll go into more detail with material and textures later on. But for this chapter, we're just going to hit the Material Ball over here in the Properties panel. Hit New, and we have a few things that we can look at. When you add a new material, uh, we'll talk more about the different type of rendering methods, but here is a sample, a preview of it. You can change what the preview looks like. I can even make it look like a monkey head. Diffuse is the color that you see that is bounced back towards you, so we'll make this a green monkey head. Specular is the glossiness, the highlights on here, and specular intensity. If I take specular intensity all the way down, you'll see that the monkey has gotten very flat. If I take specular intensity all the way up, you know, now it's nice and glossy. Render a new picture, so there's the monkey head in the internal render engine so far. Okay, I'll hit escape to get out of it. Now I'll select the plane this time with the right mouse button. And notice my materials don't show up. I have to scroll back up to the top of the panel. Hit new. And let's just give this a diffuse color of red. Alright, so there we go. Uh, there's a lot more in here with materials and textures we'll talk about later. When I hit F12 again to render a picture, here comes the monkey head. The last render took about five and about five and a half seconds. This one did as well. So again, it rendered pretty quickly, and it looks really nice, you know, with one light and um, two colors on these monkey heads and specular glossiness intensity up a little bit. Okay. So that is really just the basics of the internal render engine. Um, what we want to do is take a look at it from the cycle side of things. So I'm going to delete these materials that I created on here. So I'm going to hit the, hit the X, get rid of that material. I'll select the monkey head now with the right mouse button and delete this material off as well. So now I have no materials on everything. I'm going to change from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Now, with Cycles Render, if I just not even bother to put a material on and I hit F12, you'll see that something different occurs with this rendering. Um, it basically fills in very slowly, and the computer that I'm using right now is a school district um, non-laptop you know, without a really high graphics card in it. So you notice it's taking a lot longer just to fill this in, and you'll notice it actually fills in kind of a little fuzzy, a little spotty, and then it, it gets better in quality as it goes goes along. And that's part of the, um, the samples with Cycles Rendering. Cycles Rendering is considered a true ray tracing uh, render engine. Basically what it's doing is it's looking at all the bounced light that's bouncing around this scene in this room to render everything to try to make it look as realistic as possible. And there are a lot of things that we can change with the Cycles Render Engine to change the speed of that by going to the small camera, the render buttons in here. And I scroll down here into Samples and Geometry, or Samples and Light Paths. So if I go into Samples, I can control how many samples are occurring during a render or during a preview. So these are some of the things that can make that, that I can speed it up or slow it down. So if I change my render, say down to like 64, cut that in half. You know, then the, the yeah, you notice it got faster already just by me doing that. Um, light paths are another thing that you can play around with to control the speed and the quality to find a better balance. Um, speaking with some other, other people, uh, they try some different things here to get our, their speed as close to the internal renderer as possible. But by taking a lot of these down, you really limit your quality. Makes it, why is it even worth it at that point? Um, you can also, I'm going to hit escape out of this right now. You're seeing how this is working. I can actually render right in the viewport. I can actually change my shading where I change solid to wireframe to rendered view. And what it's going to do is it's going to render the view for me right in the viewport. And again, the quality is set to be a little lower. That's controlled underneath 
um, preview right here samples in this area. So let's talk about fixing this scene up. Let's change back to a solid view. First off, we don't really have much going on with lighting right now. Lighting is one of those things that the built-in lights in Blender, which we will have a whole chapter to talk about, don't work quite as well in the Cycles Renderer as they do in the internal renderer. So I'm going to delete that one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a plane that will be my light. Because, hey, we have real objects in scenes that actually create lighting effects. So there's my plane. I'm going to rotate it like it's pointed at the monkey head. Okay, and I'm going to go back in here to the rendered view. Now, it's pretty dark. There really isn't any lighting other than what's happening in the sky right now. My plane is selected, so here's what happens. Lights are controlled in materials in cycles. Because what I would do is add a new material to that, and you'll notice this looks a lot different than what we were looking at for materials in the internal render engine. So right here is your surface. You know, we have to use a uh, something here with the surface color. If I click in this box, there's actually one in here called emission, meaning it's going to, going to emit some of its own light. And if I take the strength of that emission up, it's going to light my scene up a lot more. It's kind of like a real light bulb. When you look at a light bulb, you see it. In the uh, internal render engine, you don't see the lights themselves. And now if I wanted to select the monkey head and put a material on it, I'm going to keep it as a diffuse. You'll see there's a bunch of different shaders that you can choose in here. Um, you can actually do like a mix shader and mix glossy with diffuse to get a glossy effect. If I just keep this at diffuse, here's the color option. So if I click the color picker, now you have the basic color picker like you had before. And now we've got a green monkey head. And if I wanted to do something with the ground, I'm going to click it in this viewport. It's easier to select than in the render viewport. Uh, we're going to add, I think, uh, what was I doing? Blue on this. So there would be a blue floor. And then if you let time pass, all of those gray areas continue to fill in. If you want them to continue to fill in more, you can play around with the settings in the render panel. Which, uh, if you look at the book, there are some good discussions on how to do that. And there are a lot of really good videos out on the internet made by other people, too, to help you with cycles. So that was, this is just basically a quick overview on what the Cycles render engine can do. Uh, I'll do one more thing with the monkey head. I'm going to change the monkey head material. Because right now he looks nice, but he's kind of flat looking. He doesn't really have a lot of glossiness to him. So what I'm going to do with this surface where it says diffuse, I'm going to change it to a mix, mix shader. And now I've got two shaders down here. So I'm going to make one of them be a diffuse, which is basically the color that you see. We'll make this one the green. And then for the second shader down here, I'm going to do a glossy with that. Okay, and apparently I changed the color here. Let's change this back to green. There we go. Okay, so now they're mixing 50%. Okay, so that's what this factor number is. So we're seeing 50% glossiness and 50% color of the object. If I drag that slider one way or the other, you're going to get either more glossiness or more color, depending on what you're going to do. So let's change that to 0.8. Okay, now let's say I went the other direction. So we got more glossiness, less color. So if I click in there and I make it like 0.2, now you'll get more color, less glossiness. So what does this look like? We said this is a node-based renderer. Um, with cycles, you know, this is basically how you can do your initial setup, but there is so much more you can do. If I were to change my viewport here, so I'm going to change it from my 3D view to the node editor. This is our node editor right now. And right here are these two colors that I added. Well, here's the diffuse color and here's the glossy through the mix shader and it's rendering to the output and there are so many nodes that can be added in here so as you work more with cycles you start working more in the actual node editor window so i'm going to switch that back to my 3d view again so there you go that is a very very quick short overview 
of the uh, two different render engines in Blender. So again, cycles will be available, but most of what we do is going to be in the Blender render engine as we talk about materials and textures in there. Uh, again, Cycles is really good, and it continues to get better with every release. And um, as are, you know, we're probably due for new computers within the next year or two at school, maybe I'll be changing my, uh, my routine with what type of render engine I work with. But it is always available as an option for our students. So have some fun with it. Play with it yourself. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.